Welcome everybody to our show. This is Custom Fab Garage on our channel Octane TV on YouTube. Make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button. And on top of that, make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you can get all the new content that comes out weekly and even every day. We're gonna be working on this vehicle today. It's a 2018 Ram 1500. Gonna be doing an amp install and new speakers. Really clean looking truck. We're gonna go ahead and start removing this radio. It's like the Uconnect. This is a 2018 Ram 1500. This is the generation before the body style changed in 2019. So we're gonna go ahead, we need to take all this off to be able to do the four channel. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this bezel. The first step of doing it is we're gonna take this little plastic piece out that's right in here. And that way that we can get to the bolts underneath it. So if you take this piece right here, you can just kind of stick your finger up underneath it and you just pull that up. This little piece right here will come off. We're going to set that up there. And then down here, you're going to have two, it looks like T20s. Um, and we're going to remove those so that this bezel will come off. I'm using a T20, but it feels like it could be a T25. So just want to let you guys know it's probably a T25. I mean, you can get it out with a T20, um, but it is definitely probably a T25. We're gonna take these two out right here. All right, and in here, there's a T20 as well at the very back, and you gotta take that screw out as well. All right, and then we're gonna take these two screws out here and here, and then we remove this little plastic piece right here. Is that a eight millimeter? Seven mil. Seven millimeter right there. So we're gonna take that out so that we can remove this piece right here and pull, pull this up to be able to get this whole fascia off. Okay, and we're gonna unplug the plugs that are underneath it to be able to pull this up. All right, you'll show the bottom of that one. So right here is the cigarette lighter right there on the back side, And that's actually where we tapped into right here for our remote wire, because um, it has switched ignition as well. So now we should be able to just pull this whole bezel off because this was kind of sitting in the way of it. So now we should be able to pull this whole bezel off to be able to get behind the radio. All right, so we've got everything removed. Jimmy's gonna try to pull on this dash. It feels super, super, super tight. So we don't quite know why it's oh, so tight. Oh, that's really tight on that side. That's really super tight, like a tiger. Sure. Like a tight, like a tiger. I feel like it got kind of. Ooh, that felt very nice. Did that feel like it came out? Oh, there we that go. That doesn't sound good. Oh, it doesn't sound good? Oh, wow. Is it coming? Oh. Is that good? That doesn't sound good. That does not sound good. Damn it! What is going on? Okay, so we finally got this thing to come off. It was hell in a half basket. So basically the clips were so super tight, it was extremely hard to get it off. So now we've got all this piece off, so we gotta take all the harnesses off so that we can basically remove this so there's a ton of harnesses down in here you're gonna have to unplug and then pull this piece off okay so everything is removed so here's all your plugs that you have left over you know there's 
four right here. There's a fifth one right here. So you got five plugs on this side. He's got one right here. So all those have to be unplugged to be able to remove that. Plus we have all this out. So now we're gonna go ahead and look behind the radio and see what's back behind there. So we're gonna move these four, looks like seven millimeters on the side and see what's behind this radio. All right, so we have everything behind here. This is an actual radio. I thought this would be a screen and a separated brain, but it is actually the radio because you can see the main harnesses right here. So and basically you've got your USB, your XM, your antenna, um, that's an antenna. So all this is pretty much everything's in here for it. So this is the main harness that's gonna be right there. Okay, so we unplugged everything, all the, everything from the radio is unplugged. Um, we went to these two wires because they're cross braided, they're normal, Chrysler colors. It's basically a green with yellow and a green with purple. We basically took our tone generator here and we tone generated here, you know, just basically T-tapped them just to make sure that this thing is not amplified and it does tone generate. So right now we know all we got to find is the color codes on this to be able to make it work. And right there are speaker tones. So we're gonna run this four channel in here. As long as the customer says it's okay, we're gonna go ahead and do it. So that, that way he can get the great sound that he actually deserves because this thing is terrible on sound. Okay, so we've cut up his factory harness. This is the actual factory harness behind the LCD. If you look, it's kind of hard to see, but there's one, two, three, four, um, wire, basically double pairs of wires right here. Those are all four of the speaker leads. Um, so you're two green, basically two, like there's gray, two grays, two greens. Um, that's how the left and rights are. So basically we've, we've cut our inputs out, went to the DSP down here. So everything's wired in, got our RCAs wired in, and then the rest of it's all the outputs that's going to the four channel amplifier, which will be underneath the driver's seat right there. So we're gonna clean all this up, plug this back into the back of the radio, test everything, make sure it all works and hope for the best. All right, so for the wave tech piece, we need a power and ground coming out of it. So we actually went over here and connected in with our remote and our ground here for, this is the cigarette lighter that's switched ignition. So we just use that to run switched ignition and uh, ground for this wave tech piece. So everything's all wired up here, getting ready to finish this all up, plug that all back in. We'll see if everything works. Okay, so we got everything working. Got the wave tech piece installed. Now what I did, I screwed up on, was I ran a two channel input and I put it into the one, two, instead of the three, four. So I switched it over to three, four, summed it, and then that all worked correctly how it's supposed to work. So I got everything running in here. Um, we're gonna get ready to put everything all back together, but it sounds phenomenal. I mean, it's like night and day difference from what you had with these six by nines. Like I bet he was probably getting 10, 15 watts at the most of those six by nine. So it sounds really, really good. And we had to turn every single thing down because it's just so much more power than what he had before, but everything sounds awesome. It's musty. Here's the uh, amps mounted. This is the sub amp, the 600.1. This is the four channel that we mounted down here. That's the two amps he's got running everything right now, which sound and look great. Audio Dynamics makes a great amplifier. Plenty of power for the subs at 600 plenty of power for the highs as well. We actually have probably more than enough power for the highs, but more than enough is gonna be better because we can turn everything down. And this is the box we're gonna be using today. It's a B-Box by Atrend. The quality of it looks really, really nice. Even inside of it, they're one of the only ones I've seen that uses at least five eighths and three quarters. Everything's glued, it looks like, and brad nailed. So it looks really nice. Hopefully it'll perform as good as it looks, but uh, definitely a very good quality box. Atrin's always made really good boxes, so this is what we're gonna be installing in here today. This is the custom sub box installed, featuring the Audio Dynamics 10 inch shallow subwoofers. Sound great in this vehicle, especially for the little amount of cubic enclosure that they have, and they are up firing. All right, customer asked us to install some LEDs underneath the dash. These are the Heist LEDs that we are gonna be using in blue. We basically are gonna install these strip lights underneath the dash under here. We did a toggle switch over here that lights up blue. So we're gonna be wiring all that over here to the actual cigarette lighter that's ignition base. So we're gonna be putting all that in right now. All right, we're gonna show you these lights that we put underneath the under, under lights under the dash. 
There you go. Wow, that looks good. Holy moly, that's crazy. And that's what the lights on inside of here and lights on outside. So it's super, super bright in here. So that shows you how bright these are. And these are the upgraded Heiss. These are the top of the line Heiss LEDs. So they are really nice. Here's the driver's side. We even installed a switch right here that has an LED on it so you can know when they're on and when they're off. So that way you can turn those on and off, which is really nice. So these are super, super bright. Love the way that these turned out. These are really high-end LEDs as well, so that's why they are so much brighter than normal brands as well.